Hello, welcome back. And today's recipe is a bit of a classic. Uh, it is using very, very cool shoe pastry. Uh, I've made shoe pastry before on a profiteroles video, so please check that out. But for now, stick with me because I'm gonna show you how to make really delicious chocolate glazed eclairs. So this shoe pastry recipe is slightly different to my profiteroles um, in that it doesn't have milk in it. This is a really, really straightforward, quite traditional recipe. I'm gonna start with a saucepan. I've already got 225 milliliters of water in there. I'm gonna add 60 grams of unsalted butter and half a teaspoon of salt. And this needs to go on the hob, but before we do that, we wanna make sure we've got the other ingredients ready. So I've also got 125 grams of plain flour, which is sifted. Make sure you sift it, it will just make it incorporate a lot easier. And I've also got four large eggs, uh, which are in a jug, and we'll deal with them later. But for now, let's get this on the hob. Okay, so let's put this over a medium heat, medium to high, because it needs to just come to the boil, uh, which will take a couple of minutes, and you're just aiming to melt the butter, dissolve the salt, and just bring it just to the boil. Once that's boiling, you can then add your flour, and you want to add it slow and steady, whisking all the time. It'll thicken up and it'll get stuck in the whisk, so at that point you want to switch over to a wooden spoon and really beat it over the heat for about two or three minutes to cook out the flour and get it nice and ready. So that's had three or four minutes just cooking out so that the flour is cooked and it's ready to take the eggs. But it is a little bit of a workout, so I'm using my mixer. Um, if you don't have one of these, you can do it with just a regular whisk or even a hand whisk. Uh, uh, sorry an electric hand whisk, that's the international symbol for electric hand whisks. So once it's in the mixer, just pop it on to beat gently for about a minute. And while it's doing that, you can break down your four large eggs. And the reason that I'm going to be doing this rather than adding them one at a time is because sometimes it just doesn't need all of the eggs. This way you can just add, you know, three and a bit eggs uh, rather than, you know, having to put a whole another egg in. But that's about ready. This is about ready too. So while the mixer is going, I'm actually going to turn up a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit at a time my eggs and beat it really well after each addition. So at first it might look a bit weird, it might look like it's not really coming together at all, but don't worry, persevere with it. Add your, keep adding your egg, beating it. It'll look weird and then it'll look fine. Don't worry. Right, I think that's ready. I haven't used all of it, because you can see I've got a tiny bit of egg left, but it's looking as it should, which is basically nice and glossy. Um, it, you can see that it's kind of dropping off. I'll do a t spoon test with it now, just to make sure. What you're looking for is to grab a bit and then let it drop off the spatula, and if it creates a V like this, it's ready. So now we just need to put it into a piping bag because obviously it's pretty difficult to use this free form. <laughs> it needs a little bit of guidance because while it's, you know, it does hold its shape once you've piped it, if you just let that drop onto the baking sheet, it would go all over the living place. Oh, it can be quite difficult to um, maneuver, <laughs> but just get it all in your piping bag. Right, that is my piping bag fully loaded. And whoop, I also have a couple of baking sheets here with sill pats already on them. Um, if you don't have sill pats, that's fine. You can just use baking sheets, um, baking paper, grease proof, whatever. So this is where you need to pipe your um, eclairs out and you need to make a decision on whether you're gonna be doing them big or small, but you wanna make sure they're all the same size, otherwise they're gonna look very strange. And I'm gonna do mine about 10 or 12 centimeters long. I'm not using a template or anything, but by all means do that if you find it easier. I'm just gonna wing it and do it freehand. Woo, 
Ooh, that's them all piped out. It is quite tricky, as you've probably discovered, to make them all the same length and the same girth, uh, and also nice and neat because your hand shakes and sometimes there's bubbles in them. But don't worry, you know, we're not marking each other out of 10 or anything. So now it's time to bake them and I've preheated my oven to 170 degrees C, which is a, in a fan oven, uh, and I'm gonna bake them for 20 to 24 minutes. I'm gonna check them at 20, make sure they're looking all right, and then add minutes if I need to. So my clairs came out of the oven and they're looking really cute. Some of them have puffed up and cracked and some of them are looking a little bit knobbly here and there. Do you know what? I don't really care. I think they're really cute. Sometimes things are ugly delicious. So now I'm gonna get on with making the glaze. I've already got my creme pat, which is uh, gonna be the filling, and you hopefully will have seen Dane show you how to make creme patissiere on Tuesday in the Tuesday Tips, so please do check that out. You don't have to fill it with creme pat, you could add uh, like a sweet cream, like a Chantilly cream or something like that. Um, but also I'm gonna be glazing it with a chocolate glaze, and it's really, really simple. I'm gonna start by making a sort of light sugar syrup with 75 millilitres of water and 100 grams of caster sugar. And you just wanna put that onto a medium heat to just stir around uh, and bring it to the boil a little bit, let it bubble for a couple of minutes and then bring it back. Right, that's nice and syrupy now. Um, it shouldn't be too thick, by the way. It should be still quite runny. And while it's hot, now you can add your chocolate and your butter. And I've got 80 grams of chocolate. It's 54% cocoa solid chocolate and 25 grams of butter. So just stir that until it's completely smooth. It might seem a little bit grainy at first, but just keep going and it will smooth itself out. And then once that's done, you can put it to one side and just cool it down for about five minutes. It's filling time and that means you need to have your creme pat ready or if you would like to have whipped cream, sweet whipped cream, have that ready. Um, I have this lovely creme pat which is basically a super duper rich custard and is really good in tarts and things like eclairs. So I have already made some and it's cooled down completely. I'm just gonna pop it into a piping bag. So, ooh, it's coming out! <laughs> um, so just have that ready to go at, to one side. But you're thinking, where am I going to put this in my eclair? There's nowhere for it to go. But that's not true because if your eclairs have worked out well, then they will be hollow inside. Um, and what we need to do first is to make a little hole or two, a couple of holes if you need to in the bottom of each eclair so that you have room to put your creme pat. I'm using a chopstick. And then when you've got all your holes in the bottoms of your eclairs, you can then start squeezing some delicious creme pat into them. Um, obviously, it's quite difficult to see visually how much you've put in because it's all contained. But you're going to need to feel, um, you'll, you'll be able to feel it getting heavier, your eclair, uh, and you'll hopefully know where to st stop. And obviously, if you can feel it splurting out <laughs> all over your hands and you've definitely put too much in. So just go easy, practice on the ugly ones perhaps and then work out how it feels and then work your way up to the pretty ones. Right, that is my eclairs filled with some delicious pastry cream. And if you've got some ugly ones that aren't gonna dip nicely, then by all means just, you know, squirrel them away and eat them later in private. Um, but for now, I'm, I've chosen my prettiest ones and I'm going to dunk them in my slightly cool but still a little bit warm glaze.
And these are the finished eclairs. Oh my goodness. And in an ideal world, you'd let them set so that they're not quite so sticky and squishy to manhandle. Um, but life's too short and sometimes you just got to eat a eclair straight away. So um, I'm going to enjoy this shortly. In the meantime, don't forget that this Sunday there is a bake-along, uh, another classic recipe. It's going to be tiramisu. I've already put the Instagram post up on Tuesday with the list of the ingredients that you're going to need to get ready for Sunday. So make sure you've checked that out. It's at Cupcake Gemma if you haven't heard already. Don't know why. Um, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope that you make lots of different eclairs. Try different things, different fillings. Let me know how you get on. Take pictures, use the hashtag Cupcake Gemma on Instagram so I can see. But for now, I just need to shovel this into my mouth. Bye! Mmm. There's a lot of pastry cream in there.